Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I am your host, Scott Bernstein, along with my co-host, 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 coast to coast, <laughs> and co-conspirator, my partner in crime, Jimmy Belgelato, the doctor. Hey, now. Uh, so we're going to do a quick hitter episode, uh, keeping people up to date with what's going on in the Tupac murder investigation. We did a whole episode uh, a month or two ago because we saw that this thing was trending towards a potential indictment which landed a couple weeks ago. Keefe D, who before when we were doing the, the full length episode, uh, we know that his house had been raided by the feds or excuse me, his house had been raided um, by the Las Vegas. Uh, I think it was the local authorities that, that raided his house in Vegas, but I could be wrong. Um, and we knew that his uh, immunity deal was falling apart. And it looked like he was going to be arrested. He has been arrested. He is facing first-degree homicide uh, charges in the murder of Tupac Shakur from September 1996. Um, let's unpack this a little bit. To me, uh, there are two big revelations here. One, that the person that we've thought this whole time was the shooter, uh, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, Keefe D's nephew, according to the indictment, was not the shooter. Uh, according to the indictment, the person who killed Tupac was DeAndre Smith, uh, Big Dre Smith, former uh, college basketball player um, that fell into the gang life. Uh, he's He died uh, natural causes 10 plus years ago, uh, but According to the indictment, Baby Lane took the gun from Keefe D, was going to be the shooter, couldn't get the right angle, so they passed the gun to, to DeAndre Smith, who actually shot into, into the car, or, which, which hit Pac. And then the second big takeaway, and then I'm going to throw it back to, to Jimmy, is where Puffy Combs, P. Diddy, uh, Sean Combs, plays in this whole thing. It seemed like for all these years... It, it were these, you know, these back room rumors and things that didn't seem like it had a lot of credibility. And now it looks like it could have a lot of credibility and the proverbial shit could be hitting the fan for the consummate American hip hop mogul. Um, the person who kind of invented the ability to be a hip hop mogul, um, Puffy Combs. I'd be worried if I was him. I'm not saying he's going to be charged. Um, but there's a lot of talk that seems to legitimize some of the talk from years ago that didn't have legitimacy back then. Yeah, I mean, the the P. Diddy's alleged involvement has always been something that people who study these things have talked about, either people who study the underworld or hip hop. But it really didn't get a lot of mainstream acknowledgement. In fact, the LA Times ran a story at one point about this and then had this to very, this, it. Ver <laughs> this very scenario. And right. they were kind of laughed off the page. Yeah. Um, as buying into a theory with a ton of holes and yeah. limited uh, merit to it, they had to, like you said, they had to, they had to pull it back and retract it. It now looks like that reporting was a lot more on point than initially believed. Yeah. So this is the most momentum that this part of the theory has ever generated. I agree with you. Who knows if that means anything in terms of the criminal justice system, but the fact that now the mainstream media is at least acknowledging that, that, that this is a, uh, you know, something that's out there and should be taken seriously. And it's even gotten to the point where other well-known hip hop artists are trolling uh puff daddy about this i guess i guess he's p diddy now i remember him when he was puff yeah daddy. He was, he's puffy to me <laughs> when you're old guys like us but but um i think 50 cent has been has been trolling him 50 cent about was this. on stage in europe a couple days ago uh he's on a tour in europe and he got on the mic and started joking with the crowd that you know puffy better lawyer up quick he's got a case coming 
Yeah, I mean, so the the argument goes that that Keefe D he's he's alleging that Puff Daddy actually issued this contract out on Tupac, and, I, and I'm still confused over whether the the intent was to kill Pac and Suge or just Pac. But what one of the arguments here is that Puffy viewed this as a preemptive hit. If you recall, during this time period, the late '90s, the temperatures were really high with the you know the battling back and forth and the diss records, especially coming from Tupac and the Death Row camp. And that Puffy felt that um, if he didn't hit one of the death row guys first, they were going to hit him. And so he contracted this out. And that's that's uh, one of the arguments. And, and Keefe D is, you know, he's he's been he's been saying this for a long time. That's the other interesting thing Scott and I were talking about off camera was it's not like he just got popped and then he throws this out as this big revelation. <laughs> he's He's been publicly claiming for a long time that Puffy was involved. Well, and not just that Puffy was involved, but that Puffy stiffed him for the money that he had promised him. And he claims, again, this is, it seems to be gaining validity. The, the, the more, the, you know, the more days that have passed since the indictment, it was something that I see that, that I don't, I didn't know if I believed or not. I seem to, have more of a appetite to believe it now. One of the things that that I thought was interesting in Keefe D's, I think it was his Vlad interview, because Keefe D was running around these last five, 10 years doing a lot of interviews and frankly, putting his immunity deal at risk. Um, he had cut in a, uh, he had cut a deal in the late 2000s, um, I believe with LAPD. Um, but take that back i think it was the federal authorities he cut a deal that was a drug case Mm -hmm. and they offered him a chance that if he debriefed about what he knew about the tupac murder he could get immunity for it as long as he copped to the drug case and did the time he needed to do for the drug case but go ahead jimmy yeah i was just gonna say if you can comment on that you're the the legal guy here I remember when we ran this episode last time, there was some pushback, people saying that he didn't have an immunity deal. And, and can you clarify that? I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who said that he had an immunity deal. Okay. The immunity deal is only worth the paper it's, it's written on. If you're being truthful yeah. with the government, if they find holes in your story, the immunity deal goes out the window. Sure. And that's why I, I, you could read the tea leaves. I think back in the summer with with the with the raids uh, in Vegas, the raid of his house. They're looking for the gun mm-hmm. that he. Uh, I'm I'm um, taking some liberty here, but I believe he told them he doesn't know where the gun is. He had no uh, knowledge of what happened to the gun afterwards. I would assume that's what he said, but yeah, right. I don't know. But it looks like they found the gun, or they found bullets from the gun, which um, is remar- Which I can't believe that's re- bizarre. But that he keep, <laughs> that's that he those... keep that as right. some type of uh, right memento right. or it's bizarre uh, a conversation piece. Uh, so I, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Only time will tell. I think there will be a lot more that that unspools from this over the next couple of months. Puffy, we we know for sure that there were ties between Puffy and the Crips. That's not sure. a secret. No. Puffy, uh, whenever he would go out west in the 90s, um, he would hire Crips as his security guards. Um, there are a number of people that I deem credible that are coming forth now with saying that Puffy knew Keefe D. Now, right. that doesn't mean that Keefe D took a murder contract from Puffy to kill Tupac. Right. But both of those revelations, putting Puffy, Puffy, putting Puffy <laughs> in a company of the Crips and having knowledge or some association, even, if, even a small connection to Keefe D, puts you closer to the belief that he might have utilized them for, for wrongdoing. Yeah. I, I, I If I had to predict, I, I would say. There, there won't be any legal 
problems for Puffy with this unless Keefy can provide. I, I have a feeling he, he is not going to be considered as strong enough. Um, just his testimony alone, unless they can have someone else come forward and corroborate it. But it certainly is interesting. And um, I imagine I Puff Daddy's worried about this from a public relations because he's yeah. he has a pretty, you know, a lot of people who, who don't clean follow this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people that don't follow this think he's a very they think he's above clean, board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he has some right. skeletons in his closet. Uh, not literally. Uh, we don't. Who knows? <laughs> That's not, what I'm the the, the um, issues that he's had in his past. One being the shooting uh, in the club in in '99 uh, with with Shine, his protege at the time, and Jennifer Lopez, um, and then the other being before he became famous, he staged some type of event or concert in uh, Washington D.C. at Howard University, and there was um, some people ended up dead. Uh, from overcrowding and like trampling on uh, in the crowd that he yeah. was yeah. Um, he he was running the event and that the the alleged ties to BMF which um, right we've we, talked about we, we've had that I mean someone from the federal government IRS criminal investigation division told us that straight up I mean I don't, yeah. that doesn't mean you can prove it in court but they yeah. they told us that. That he, Their informants, that's true. informants were telling yeah. uh, federal law enforcement in the mid '90s that Puffy Combs started Bad Boy Records. Yes, Clive Davis. You know, um, I think that's who who uh, gave him the label. It was either Clive or or Ermet Aragon, one of the the big music conchos. Um, but it's not that simple. Uh, he still needed money for startup costs and, and whatnot. And we heard from very credible sources in law enforcement that uh, the Black Mafia family had provided that startup cash to Puffy. There's also uh, the belief that they provided startup cash to um, guys down in uh, uh, Texas, as well as uh, guys that were affiliated with Murder, Inc., uh, Irv Gotti, Ja Rule. Ashante and, and those and those people. So um yeah. yeah, and so again, none of that means he he had anything to do with Pac's death, but it does it does su suggest that his his that that he's a more complicated person than just the guy yeah. you see on Good Morning America. And, and his dad, I mean, he, he, it, again, it's not a secret. His dad was a gangster. His dad was murdered um in New York in the early seventies. His dad worked for. Uh, Nikki Barnes and Frank Lucas and all those Harlem dope bosses of the Superfly era. Um, and then I, I don't think I finished uh, a thought a couple minutes ago was that in one of those interviews that Keefe D did, I believe it was Vlad, he said that at his debriefing um, that the feds told him that informants had told them that Puffy had either offered or provided Keefe a million dollars for the hit. And Keefe's response was, I never saw the money, but other people got paid. Mm -hmm. um, but he's saying, again, I didn't know if I believe this when I first heard this, but now I'm a little bit more prone to believe it, that the feds were kind of back, according to Keefe D, the feds were backing up what he was saying uh, at in his debrief yeah so it's it's interesting we'll follow it we're we're both um big fans of old school hip-hop especially uh but tupac's you know, a guy tupac, to me man yeah too, tupac's the goat i mean i grew opinion. up i grew up on tupac i can remember you can hit the siren i can remember at school i'm 14 years old and 15 and my buddy's like hey i got the new uh pac just put out a an album i was like who's tupac what are you talking oh the guy from digital underground and yeah. I remember going into the in the parking lot into some kid that had a and listening to like that's his old I, I just I, I he was so so instrumental in my um my falling in love with hip hop and rap and and he's such a uh, complex fascinating riveting character it's it's sad that and I, well, we'll end on this I guess uh, to me and I think I might have said this in in the last episode to me. What you saw from Tupac at 25 years old was merely scratching the surface of what would have been one of the all-time great artists. 
because I don't think he would have just been a rapper. He would have been an actor, a producer, a director, a poet. I mean, he was all these things already, but I think he would have Oscars now. I think he'd be doing that kind of corporate Snoop Dogg yeah. thing now where so he, he, yeah. he there was so much more for him to achieve um and it's just tragic that we only got uh i mean he was only in the in the public eye for about five years yeah it's it's sort of um bizarre when you think about it that way because he was so larger than life but yeah when when he was actually a well-known artist it was a very brief very brief time and check out uh for the youngsters out there check out juice Check out Poetic Justice. Check out Gang Related. Um, those are probably my three favorite Tupac movies. Oh, uh, Above the Rim. Oh, best great soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And and shameless self promotion. This is an audio only episode. Our interview with Ben Westoff, who wrote the book Original Gangsters, Original Gangsters yeah. the untold story of Dr. Dre, Easy E, Ice Cube, Tupac Shakur, and the birth of West Coast rap. Um, that's an audio only. Uh, so maybe one of these days we'll put it up on YouTube too. But um, anyhow, I, I, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. We'll keep you updated on what's going on in the Tupac murder investigation and upcoming trial for Jimmy Bucciolato and Benny behind the glass. I'm Scott Bernstein. OG pod out. Mm-hmm.